Ready, Dan? Meeting come to order. Board to take charge of the doors. Taking over the time. 7:33. All members, please rise to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. We have the roll call of the officers. President Mike McCarran here. Vice President Mike Magianis here. Recording Secretary Dan McDonald's here. Financial Secretary Steve Pasco here. Treasurer Bill Magnum here. Conductor Doug McCarran here. Warren Skip Westmoreland here. Trustee Jerry Block here. Trustee Luis Antoveros here. Trustee Pete Lorara here. Go over the minutes of last general membership meeting. The minutes from the July 19, 2013 general membership meeting, the meeting was called to order at 7.41 p.m. A roll call of officers was taken and all were present except the following who were excused, Conductor Doug McCarran. Minutes of the June 21st, 2013 membership meeting were read and approved. Minutes of the July 19, 2013 executive board meeting were read and approved. The financial report for June 2013 was read and posted. Communications were read and filed. Under report of the officers, Vice President Mike Magianis gave the Area Standards and Political Action Report for San Diego. Trustee Jerry Block gave the Area Standards and Political Action Reports for Arizona State. Trustee Bill Mandum gave the Area Standards and Political Action Report for Bakersfield. Representative Bob Molesky gave the Southern California Political Action Report. Recording Secretary Dan McDonald gave the Area Standards Report for Southern California. President Mike McCarran gave the Regional Council of Carpenters Report and presented Bob Molesky with his 50-year membership card. <laughs> Under the raffle drum drawing, 10 names were drawn for $250 and no one was present to win. Next month, six names will be drawn for $300. Jonathan Hernandez won the $100 door prize. If there being no further business, the meeting was adjourned. And that concludes the reading of the general membership meeting minutes. Okay, any additions or corrections to those minutes? Hearing none, the standard approved is read. Uh, Dan, we're going out of order here a little bit, so are we uh, are, are we going to do the uh, a reading of the executive board minutes? All in reading of minutes? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll have the executive board minutes. The Executive Board Meeting Minutes for August 16, 2013. The meeting was called to order at 6 p.m. Roll call of officers was taken and all were present. The financial report was examined and signed by the trustees. Communications read and the following recommendations were made. It was moved second carry to videotape the membership meeting for safety purposes. It was moved second carry to follow the order of business as set forth in the Constitution of the United Brotherhood of Partners and Joiners of America and if violated, the meeting shall be immediately adjourned. There was no further business come before the board, and the meeting was adjourned at 6.15. Okay, uh, are the reading of the executive board. Uh, any minutes. additions or corrections to those minutes? I have a question. Uh, why did we need uh, security? Point of order, Mr. Chairman. If you have to speak on the issue, you need to relinquish the chair to the vice president. Okay, vice president, I have a question. Uh, Brother Megalonis, is my mic on? Yes. Okay, so question. I got here at approximately 6.30. Everybody was in the executive board uh, uh, room. I noticed that there was a bunch of security guards here, and uh, I didn't know what was going on. It's the first time in history since I've been on the executive committee here for over 20 years that a meeting was conducted <coughs> without the, the president being present. So my question to you is why is there security here tonight? Okay, the meeting didn't start until you started it. The executive board meeting you're talking about? Yes. Okay, it didn't start until you started it. So that's one. As far as the uh, security, it was just a safety.
precaution. Okay, guess, what, what was the safety precaution, Mr. Chairman? I guess the, it's at the council. I heard that they have security over there, and we figured it'd be a pretty big meeting tonight. Okay, well, what's the purpose? I don't understand the purpose. I, I've been a member here since 1978, and we have never had 15 security guards here. There's got to be a better explanation than that, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, for starters, there's not 15 security personnel. And we've received communications from the regional council that said that you were mentally unstable and that you were planning on violent action tonight. And the regional council decided that to mitigate that possibility in protection of the membership of this local, we were gonna, they were going to provide security service for the, for the meeting. Okay, so how did the regional council uh, determine that I was unstable? You're going to have to take that issue up with Supervisor Mike Draper. Supervisor Mike Draper here tonight? I don't see him in the body. No. no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mike. Hey, Mike Megalonis, I'll let you like a brother. Okay. No, that's hard. Point of order, Mr. Thank President. Thank you. We have the reading of the financial report. The financial report for July 2013, the beginning general fund balance was $737,634.65. Cash receipts for the month, $339,864.72. Cash disbursements for the month, $316,899.60 for an ending balance of $760,599.77. Okay, if anybody would like to take a look at the financial report, as always, it's behind the glass near the men's, uh, men's restroom. Uh, communications and bills. Communications, I have a communication from the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters from Supervisor Mike Draper. It's addressed to all affiliated local unions, and it's regarding Regional Council Executive Committee action. The following are minutes of the August 13, 2013 meeting of the Southwest Regional Council's Executive Committee. As you can see, the executive committee, after receiving information from legal counsel on the legal ramifications and potential issues surrounding actions taken by Mike McCarran that led to the 14D charges and the, supervi uh, and the supervision, voted unanim unanimously to approve, support, and maintain supervision of the regional council. In addition, the executive committee members unanimously approved seeking to recover more than uh, $260,000 in interest that was repaid to the Southwest Carpenters Training Fund without their knowledge or approval based on Mike McCarran having unilaterally and improperly entered into leases with the fund that were above market rate. I am sending you for your information and to share with your membership. Fraternally, Mike Draper, Southwest Regional Council Supervisor. Would you like me to go through the, the minutes, Mr. Chairman, please. or make them available to the members? Please, please go through the minutes. Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters Executive Committee meeting minutes. August 13, 2013, Los Angeles, California. The meeting was called to order by Supervisor Mike Draper. Present was Hal Jensen, Joe Duran, Frank Koch, Dan Langford, William Martin, Pat McGinn, Luis Antiveros, Antiveros, pardon me, Louis, Randy Thornhill, and Ruben Zuniga. Others present were Mike Draper, Justin Widener, Phil Newkirk, Curtis Morgan, John DiCarlo, and Dan Shanley. Supervisor Mike Draper announced that he had removed Mike Goals from the executive committee and appointed Luis Antiveros to take his place. Supervisor Draper addressed the executive committee members about the ongoing situation that John DiCarlo and Dan Shanley, through privileged communication, discussed the legal ramifications and potential issues surrounding actions taken by
Mike McCarran that led to the 14D charges and supervision. The executive committee discussed the issues and asked questions about the situation. A motion was made to approve, support, and maintain the supervision. It was passed unanimously. A motion was then made to request that Mike McCarran repay the regional council the interest charge that was the result of the lease overpayments by the Southwest Carpenters Trust Fund, which totals more than $260,000, and to authorize the firm of DiCarlo and Shanley to take legal action to recover those funds if necessary. It was passed unanimously. It was then moved second period to approve having the Southwest Regional Council pay for providing professional security at local union meetings where there is concern regarding potential violence. The meeting was adjourned, respect, respectfully submitted Justin Widener, Assistant Supervisor. And that concludes the reading of the Regional Council Executive Committee minutes. Uh, reports of accidents, uh, sickness, or death. None to report, Mr. Chairman. Appropriations of money, drawing, order, or of bills? None to report, Mr. Chairman. A reading by the President of receipts from the General Secretary Treasurer for money sent to the General Office and from the District Councils where such exists. I have not received anything. Then no uh, report, this, this Mr. Chairman. Is, uh, uh, just a little point of order. Uh, you know, this is where we're going. Uh, this is all foreign to me, the way we do this order of business. It was sprung on me in the executive committee, so I apologize. This order is kind of new for me. Uh, let's see here. Election and installation of officers. None to be completed tonight. Okay, reports of officers, delegates, and committees. Uh, reports. Dan McDonald. I have no report for the body this evening. Okay, uh, Louis Ontiveros. Okay, uh, Bill Mag. I have no reports. Uh, Bob Molesky. I have no report. Steve Pasco. I have no report. Okay, so any other officers have any reports? Doug McCarran, do you have a report? No. Does anybody have anything for the good of the order? I did. Uh, Mr. Chairman? 